What is up guys, it's TSL here back with a brand new video. In today's video I will be showing you guys how you can make your very own GUI typewriting animation to animate your text getting in on the screen. Now as a little demo of this, I made a quick demo of what we'll be making in the video. See it just slowly or quickly can type up your whatever you want it to say and it'll just basically look like that and we'll make it easy that you can change the timing and change the text that you want to say and stuff like that also guys don't mind my avatar i was just trying to impersonate a mod in a uh in a emergency response server so yeah that's why my outfit looks like this anyways guys let's get into the video all right so the first thing you'll need is obviously a screen gui inside of the starter gui service and I have a demo and a typewrite uh, screen GUI and I'll be using the typewrite the typewrite one to show you guys this so I'm just going to disable my demo one so now let's just insert a frame in here and let's just set the size to like 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0 0.2 comma 0 uh, we'll insert a little UI corner in here and we'll change it to like let's say 15 now we could change the color of the frame, let's say we want it to be this nice blue color and then we can change the anchor point to 0 0.5 comma 0 and the position to 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0 0.05 comma 0 and that should give us something right here. Now the next thing we could do is we can make a frame and this will be the frame that has the uh, profile picture so we can call it PFP standing for profile picture. We can make the size on the x-axis 0 0.1, 0 and the size on the y 0 0.9, 0 and then we can just scale this out like that and to about 0 0.2, 0 on the x and then we can also give this a UI corner of let's say also 15 and then we can just position this like right here or a little more to the side and then what we'll do is just copy this color we could paste that in right here and then just click on this and just make it darker alright so the next thing we want to do is just move this over a little more and then the next thing we'll do is just inside of our actual frame not the PFP frame we'll make a text label we could call this uh, content and we can make the size, how about 0 0.7, 0 0.7 comma 0 comma 0 0.9 comma 0. And then we can just move this around here. And this should be good. We can make the background transparency to 1. We can make the text size, let's say 20. Or actually we'll do 19 because that fits the text that I'll be using. You guys can also use text uh, text scale to true if you want, but I'm doing it like this this time around. Make the font to source of sans bold as well, and I'll give it a text color of white. And yeah, that looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to delete all the text in here. And basically, the next step I want to do is add a string value into this text label. We'll name this display, and the value that's in this string value will be whatever the text that we want to type right on that's going to be the text that it, that it will display. So you guys could use a variable in the local script as well, but I find this way a lot easier if you're like copy and pasting things around, like say you have multiple typewriting text label things, just change the display instead of going into the script. It just makes things a little less confusing. All right, so I'm just going to go back into my demo and just copy the text I have for my display. So we'll just put that in here. And now we'll make the local script. So just insert a local script into your content text label. We can call this typewrite or typewriter. And then basically what we want to do is just get the text, which is going to be the display, like I mentioned. So script.parent.text or not dot text dot display. Then we'll make a local function for our typewrite called typewrite. And we'll just uh do task.sponso in function so that it doesn't mess with anything else. Like if you have a lot of other stuff in your script and the waiting and like, or, or messing around with other loops, nothing will really affect this and this won't affect anything else. So in this, we can add a, like a task.wait of 0 0.5. This will just make it so that 
you know, we definitely are going to be in the game just waiting 0.5 seconds until it actually starts typewriting. So then here we'll just make a local uh, split text variable. And this is just going to be the text.value colon split. And we'll need this for a few things. One will be to get every individual character, and the other will be to get the total amount of characters in this, in this text. So also up here, let's make a local uh, typewrite or typing duration variable, and uh, I'll set this to two. So then down here under the split text, we'll do for i equals one, and we want it to go up to the number of characters we have in our text. And it'll just go up by one every time, so we don't have to add that. It just does that automatically. At the bottom of this, we want to task dot wait the typing duration divided by the number of split text. And then above that, what we can do is just script dot parent dot text is equal to script script dot parent dot text and concatenate that with our split text at the current index. All right, so that alone should already give us our typewriting animation. So let's test that out. Uh, well, obviously it's not going to do that if we don't actually call this function. So down here, we'll just call our typewrite function. And here you go, it starts typing it out. And uh, yep, that's a problem. So let's uh, let's fix this problem. I don't really know why that's happening. Uh, I guess oh, text wrap has to be on. I don't know why that was off. And now it should work. So let's try this out. All right, typewriting. Yep, next line. All right, there you go. So guys, I'll also show you guys how to make the PFP thing if you want that. But if you don't want that, I guess this is the end of the video for you. So if you guys are leaving now, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and really motivates me to keep making videos and really helps me to stop procrastinating finally. So uh, yeah, please leave a like on the video for the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment on what you want to see next video and subscribe to the channel. Also turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. Alright, so now to make the PFP. Now this is actually something I have never done before. So I just learned this like 10 minutes ago. But anyways, let's just add a local script. Or actually, first first off, we can close these. We want to add an image label inside of our PFP frame. And we can copy this UI corner in Control or Command Shift V. Paste that into our image label. This image label will have a size of 1, 0, 1, 0, just to make it take up the full size of the frame. Uh, we could get rid of the image, and we can set the background transparency to 1, because we don't need that. And now we can move this local script into the image label, and we can just make the image label name to profile. All right, so in here, we let's just uh, check out, let's just, in here, first thing we need is our player. So local players equal to game colon get service players. And we'll do dot local player. Do local user ID is equal to player dot user ID. Next, we want to get the thumbnail type. So we'll do thumb type is equal to enum dot thumbnail type. And we'll be using headshot, but there are other types that you can use you can do like a full avatar or like stuff like that but we'll be using headshot for this tutorial then we'll have the thumbnail size so local thumb size is equal to enum dot thumbnail size dot do 420 dot size 420 by 420 and then this last variable just copy it from my other script and uh, I guess we should make a players variable for this so we'll just make this a players and up here we'll do a local players is equal to that. All right. So anyways, local content comma is ready is equal to our players colon get user thumbnail async, pass in our user ID, the players user ID, our thumbnail type, which in our case is headshot and our thumbnail size, which in our case is 420 by 420. So now all we have to do is just set the image. So 
our image label image label is equal to script dot parent right so we can just comment this out it's just for you guys to remember so basically all we need to do is script dot parent dot image is equal to content and then our and actually that's it that's all we need so this is just we'll make a comment for set image and over here we can just do uh, PFP variables and now if we go ahead and play this it should hopefully load in our thumbnail which it does gotta say uh, this avatar I hate the pants so much but this was the admin avatar in that server I was trying to impersonate a admin in which I did very success which I did very successfully for some reason and yeah the thumbnail looks way better than than this Alright, anyways guys, that is it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video and this helped you out, please, please, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Like I mentioned before, it really helps me out and really motivates me to keep making these videos for you guys. So also, please remember to leave a like so that everybody knows this is a good video and so that other people can get the help that they need. And also turn on post notifications so you guys don't miss out on a future tutorial video that can be very helpful to you. That being said, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.